While Brighton were languishing in the old third division at English Football Summit, Don Revy's Leeds United were once again champions. It was just an unbelievable time to be associated with Leeds United, but that's what the gaffer created, and uh, it was a pleasure and an honour to be part of that. Well, I think there was a great respect from me to them and from them back to me. Um, we were very, very close. And um, I don't know, it was a bond that nobody could break. And we played all the way for Leeds United. Ellen Road is the only place for Revy's affection for Leeds wasn't shared by many neutrals. love to see the tightening up of referees extended to such an extent where it would be a crime to go and clobber somebody. More often than not, on Football Focus, every Saturday, Cluffy would be on there. And uh, I don't think we were his favourite club, to be honest, or his favourite players. They used to really have a right go at us. The dirty Leeds tag didn't stop Revy becoming England's new manager leaving a vacancy at Elland Road. The gaffer did tell us that um, he recommended to the board of directors uh, John Giles and Billy Bremner be a joint managerial and that would have gone down well. Typical our board didn't listen to our gaffer, which I think they should have done. I would think if you'd have said any, any manager out of a thousand that Brian Clough wouldn't have been the name anybody would come up with. For our board to go and appoint him was the most amazing thing. You ain't going to believe this, but he was a nervous man meeting us. And you wouldn't think that, would you? The first meeting, I think that was his downfall, because he actually went through every, you know, what he thought of each and every one of us. His remarks wasn't very nice, to say the least. What he said to Eddie was he should have played far more matches than, than you have done because if you'd have been a racehorse, you'd have been shot, young man. I think if he'd have come in and just said, look, never mind what I said in the past, you're a good side, um, and uh, I only said the things I did to try and upset you a bit, professionalism, and it would have been accepted. Um, but he came in and um, you know, he wouldn't let it die, he wouldn't let it rest. And his, almost his first action, as I think is famously known, was to tell them to put away all their medals because they only got them by cheating. Uh, it's hardly designed to, uh, to get people on your side. There the man who takes over from Don Reby, Brian Clough. Under the old gaffer's watchful eye, Clough saw his first match in charge of Leeds descend into chaos. At the slippery slope for him at the start of that season. They couldn't, they couldn't find their form, or or didn't want to find it. I don't know. I I, I think there were some players there who didn't want to play for Clough. We were brought up on playing for each other, working for each other. We were a family, and there was just no feeling around the place. It was just a matter of we're going out to play a match, and um, you know we don't really want to play for this guy, and and and, and so therefore there was a there was a bad feeling round round the dressing room. I ended up with John O'Hare following Brian to, to Leeds United and I knew after one day it was a no-go situation. Uh, I've never come to an abrupt halt as suddenly as that. The players obviously weren't prepared to, to take him. And I even sat in at one or two players' meetings where they were trying to get rid of him. O'Hare can't shake off Gallagher, although that hit the referee. And here's Clark! The referee may have helped Leeds. He has! Clough won just one match at Leeds, and after six weeks, he was axed. How can anybody do anything in 44 days? Just impossible. I mean, God couldn't do anything, could he, in 44 days? Never mind Brian Clough. Why is Mr Clough the wrong man now when he was the right man exactly six or seven weeks ago? Because the, the board thinks that uh, to keep the players happy and uh, we, uh, we, this is this, the, uh, what we should do. We have been blamed for getting him the sack. Now, my answer to that is, is, is purely and simply this. When a football club 
appoints a manager. That manager is appointed by the board of directors. And when that football club sacks a manager, he is sacked by the board of directors. End of story. I think it's a very sad day for Leeds. I think it's slightly sad for football. It was the first time he hadn't had Peter and I think the first thing he did when he blew it Leeds was to go and get Peter Taylor back on board with him. So I think that showed that Brian realised that, uh, you know, probably he, he, he wasn't able to do it on his own. He went into the lion's den, I'm afraid, and they, and they ate him. Not many people have done that. The day he was sacked, Clough agreed to go on Yorkshire television to talk about his time at Leeds. Don Revy had also been approached to appear on the show. Why did you come from Brighton to Leeds to take it over when you'd criticised them so much? Why did you take the job? Well, because I thought it was the best job in the, in the country. I wanted to do something you hadn't done. I want to win the league, but I want to win it better. Yeah, but there's no way you can win it better. Why Mr. not? Winner, no, 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 no. I couldn't give any other answer. And no. I wanted to win the European Cup. Truthfully, I think that Brian is a fool of himself. I want to be like me. Well, Don obviously <laughs> wants to be like him. I believe in a different concept of football to Don. I think. Clough's brief tenure at Leeds became the subject of David Peace's novel, The Damned United. What I did was, I, I, in researching the novel, was to, to read all the books that the Leeds players had, had written about their time, all the books Clough had written himself, because he wrote a number of autobiographies, and then books about Clough, then started to imagine what it would be like. So it's, it's true, but filtered through my imagination. <laughs> Peace's posthumous portrayal of Clough was controversial and criticised by Brian's family who rejected it, but it didn't stop the novel becoming a film. I think what we've done with the film is very different to what the book is. The book is a very dark book and, and does concentrate on a very particular period of time in, in Clough's life and career. And if, if there's going to be one film about Brian Clough, if I was a member of his family, I would want it to be a joyous celebratory thing and looking at all his achievements not just this one very particular period um, and so I completely understand why they've been very wary about the film I think the film was uh, more accurate than I thought it would be having having read the book what upset me was that it portrayed as if Billy was a troublemaker which couldn't be further from the truth it was absolute rubbish that but that upset me that but as far as I'm concerned, the first thing you can do for me is to chuck all your medals and all your caps and all your pots and all your pans into the biggest fucking dustbin you can find. Because you've never won any of them fairly. You've done it all by bloody cheating. A lot had been said about the players had got Brian Clough the sack, which wasn't, in our opinion, the case. Brian had got himself the, the sack. And when they told us the way the film was going to be portrayed, we thought, yes, that would be great because everybody will be able to think, well, if that was me in the office um, or at work um, and somebody had have come in and said that to, to me, what would my reaction be? And the amount of people I've, I've talked to since, uh, I know, I've never heard anybody not say, well, you can't believe a man would behave like that. And if he had have done it to me, the reaction would have been exactly the same. Look, it's the players' lounge, Brian. Ten minutes. The guy who played Cluffy, by Christ, what an actor he is, because I closed my eyes and it was like listening to Brian. Ah, oh, you are a disgrace! For missing the target from there, you want bloody shooting! Now get in there! That's what I pay you for! You mention the name Brian Clough to anybody now. They smile and they talk about things that he said or did, you know, and that has to, to be true to him. That has to be in the film and uh, more of that has to be in the film. So. So I think the film, I hope, does far more justice to him as a man uh, than maybe the book did. I was on the phone, I got sacked at Leeds. I was out of work and I was a so-called failure, despite the financial uh, settlement I got, which made me, it made me secure financially for the first time in my life. <laughs>